Okay, call the meeting order. Can we say, we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this ability to gather. Uh, we just ask for your presence here as we make decisions for kids, for staff, for the community. Uh, just be with us. Give us the gift of discernment as we make these decisions. All these things we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. Um, for those of you watching online, because nobody else is here, um, we will not have a uh, student of the month. We were concerned about traffic and so forth because of the eclipse today, so we will resume that next month. Yep. Um, I don't think, Evelyn, do you, are you here to speak? To the board. She, I mean, we'd have to tell her if there was a fire because she didn't even stand up for the board. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we will forego participation at school board meetings because that only doesn't want to say anything. Let's see. Okay, so it is recommended that the agenda for the April 8th, 2024 meeting be approved as presented with additions, corrections, or deletions as recommended by the board. I have a motion. Yes. Natalie, second. Heather, all those four. Seven oh uh, uh, is recommended that the minutes from the March eighteenth, twenty twenty four meetings be approved as presented. I have a motion. Sure. Second. Heather. All those four. Seven oh uh, uh, is recommended that the claims number is um, one eight zero four four through. 18164. Be approved as presented. Do I have a mo do I have any discussion on the claims first? Okay. Do I have a motion, Mike? Second. Sure. No. Or all those four. Seven of uh, Mr. Provo would like to take over. I will do that. Thank you. First item on the agenda, um, board you're presented with a listing of students for next year uh, some wishing to graduate after the first semester in uh, 2024 and then some at the end of the school year in 25 um, as of right now they're all on track to do that but we need board approval to allow for that type of thing so um, making the recommendation to you from mr. Kirkendall that we allow those graduates as long as they meet requirements at the end of those time periods to graduate early. Any discussion? Is the May, are the people graduating a whole year earlier? December. I just said for this, for December and May graduates. Just didn't, I just wondered. So <laughs> yes, they would be, they'd okay. be graduating at the end of their junior, junior year. Okay. So they're a whole year early. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. So for them. What kinds of, do you know what kinds of paths okay. they're going? That I'd have to ask family? Eric as, as far as what uh, what they're planning on doing after, their, after that time. So this past year is the first time we've allowed the end of junior year to mm -hmm. graduate early, correct? Yeah. Okay. It'd be interesting to look back at the students that we allowed that to happen with and yeah. to see what even even an interview with them I mean some kind of a, yeah. a survey interview to see their thoughts about that yeah we they, send stuff out to graduates because the state they, requires some of that stuff to figure right. out what they're doing so we'll definitely be doing that right but I think a little differently about you know what did they did they find did they find that that did they accomplish their goal of what they were planning to do for that extra year or you know what was this a decision that was made and, and accomplished what they had right. planned out to do. Yep. I think it might give us some insight. Absolutely. I mean, not that we want to prove this, but I'm just saying. Well, well they sure already, we, if they qualify. Right. Yeah. Is that a state mandated, mandated that we have to allow them? 
or is that just our choice? No, it's so the reason we ask you to do it is because in board policy it says that um, right now it's in board policy only approved for a semester early. Okay. So for them to do two semesters, we have to have your approval. But oh, okay. I'm kind of like agree with what you guys are saying. If they can get it done and they can get out and either get in the workforce or or whatever, I don't know what what's well, going to do good to hold them hold them here. But, but I do agree that we need to to look at how that works for them after mm -hmm. yeah. after graduation. Do they do what they yes. say they're going to do? They do something else. Is it not successful? Successful? Right. Yeah. I, I mean. I think they wish they wanted to be a kid, you know, right. afterwards, they wish that they had another year to grow up. Or I did that college. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because we always, everybody wants to grow up too fast, but yeah. then you realize once you're an adult, it's like, this is, this is it until the end of time, you know, to see how their perception, of course, if you ask them now, they're eager to get out, but then later mm -hmm. on, like, is it everything you expected it to be? Is that kind of what you're, did, your, did that, you accomplish what you? Did you accomplish what you expected to do in that year? And, and was it as expected? And as a school system, is there, is there this work-based learning connection activity we could do maybe mm -hmm. for one more semester with them that would be helpful mm -hmm. to help them be still accomplish prepared. what they're maybe wanting to do mm -hmm. but yet then that, that keep them here at the school for that one semester I don't I don't know I just I, I, we won't know unless you ask mm -hmm. and, and talk to the stakeholders and find out what the value of, of it was to them yep. I think it's good to get curious about it yeah yeah and how are those surveys done are they sent out as a, a letter survey or when you ask grads what I have to ask Eric that I think I think we try to keep if we can keep electronic information for as far as email addresses and stuff like that but I'll, I'll check with uh, Kayla and Eric to see how exactly they do that because I, I know we send that out to graduates when my husband taught at Hoosier Hills Career Center um, every spring he was on the phone and there was the five years and the mm -hmm. I think it was 10 years. Was it 10? Yeah, yeah, something that, you know, that there were a bunch of phone calls. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was, they were fascinating. They you were get really a better fast. response from phone calls if you can get a hold of people. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Talk to a lot of parents that way because yeah. they were <laughs> not there anymore. They had right. moved on. But yeah, it yeah. was fun. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve this? Mike? Second? Heather? All those four? 700. Okay, thank you. Next up is something we have we have done this one in the past couple years. However, uh, the math department now wants to make this permanent. Um, that basically we're no longer going to use those uh, I, I learn scores as a condition of eighth grade students entering geometry as freshmen. Um, I completely agree with it. I think there's nothing more powerful than the teacher's recommendation on that. They're the ones that have them in in class. Um, one test does not dictate whether you can go on and be successful. I've seen it out of my own kids. Um, so they want to make it that now it's basically going to be uh, the teacher's recommendation on how they do uh, that year. They already have to have a certain grade at the end of each semester to be able to move on. But we're just going to take that I learn component out of it. And what they've seen out of the last couple of years is some of these kids who do not pass the math I learn they go over to high school and do just fine in those advanced math classes um, and really don't struggle at all. So uh, <coughs> that comes directly from the math department. So that's what I'm recommending to you. Any discussion? And most of these eighth graders will already be in an algebra class, right? Yeah, they're taking eighth grade, al eighth grade. algebra's eighth grade. Eighth, right. And then, but one of the, one of the things that was, the, that the board adopted a while back mm -hmm. was that if they did not pass iLearn, math in eighth mm -hmm. grade they could not go on mm -hmm. to take geometry mm -hmm. and with COVID um, they felt that some of those scores were affected by the, the COVID and mm -hmm. COVID and not having the instruction <laughs> that they would have normally had so they did a couple year waiver and then they started realizing that well I we think these kids are doing just fine whether they've passed I learn or not mm -hmm. so that's what they wanted to go to and they've already been pre-evaluated to be able to be in algebra in eighth grade, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Yes. okay. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve this, Dennis? Second. Okay. Kim. All those four. Seven zero zero. Okay. Next up, we're going to uh, recommend. Student handbooks, this is the time of the year when we typically do that, do it in April, and then we got to get them off to the printers. 
Um, first up, recommending to approve the elementary student handbook for 24-25. That's been on posted with the, this agenda for people to see since last week. Of course, board, you've had it for over a month. Um, really nothing much in the elementary has changed, really a bunch of dates and stuff like that. So nothing that is uh, majorly uh, information-wise um, that, that would be considered anything that we need to let people know about right now. So pretty pretty mundane at the elementary level. Now, I'm gonna ask a question so everybody can hear because I've had several people asked me about this with our cell phone policy that we were required to do is what is current in the handbooks going to be used or are we going to revisit that that we so they they went in and made changes after the law was passed so everything okay. you saw in there should be what was in there they put the statute in there and made changes to what Okay. what was going to happen. And I was going to talk a little bit about that when we get to the middle school and high school, but okay. not too much because I want the administrators to be able to talk with parents and okay. and kids and let them know what's coming for next year. But what, so the law is going to be, in, is already in the handbook. Mm -hmm. okay. I haven't looked at them since. Yep, that's what the admin says they were doing is putting those in for okay. you. All right. Um, okay, any other discussion about the elementary handbook? Nope. Okay, do I have a motion to approve that? Sharon, second, Kim, all those four, seven zero. Thank you. Next up is middle school, and I'll just kind of make the comment about the middle school and high school in general, that one of the biggest changes uh, parents and students are going to see is that new cell phone bill that was passed by the legislation, and basically the bill states that uh, schools need to ensure that cell phones are in no way a distraction in the classroom so now it's going to be up to us to make sure that happens um, middle school um, already keeps pretty good tabs on that they're not to be seen or heard um, that's always been the the rule uh, but I'm gonna let um, Mrs. Clary and uh, Mrs. Yoho kind of get with the students and the parents and talk to them more about um, exactly how that's all going to be handled within the classroom. Uh, high school is a little bit different because um, staff, and it's, it still says this in the, in the statute, that staff, if it has to do with an educational purpose, can allow the students to have the phone out and use it if necessary. However, we've got Chromebooks now and that sort of thing, so I don't see what that a phone can do much any, of anything better than a Chromebook can. So. Um, definite changes coming to the high school. I think it's a little bit, students have been a little bit more uh, free to have those out when they're not supposed to and that sort of thing. So I think uh, there's gonna be some growing pains with this at the high school, but it is what it is. Hopefully parents understand this is not coming from the schools. This is 100% coming from the state of Indiana and the legislation. We just get to be the ones to, to solve it and deal with it. So um, that's, that's kind of what we've got going on. That, that's the major change there at the at the middle school and the high school both. So, more information to come. I'm sure administrators are going to be talking with kids before they leave for the the summer and talking with parents about, you know, here's what to expect coming back to school next year. Okay. Any other comments? I just want to say if any of that is an educational um, issue and and keeps our students from learning in the classroom then whatever policies your administrative team feels is appropriate. I think, I can't speak for everybody, but I would very much support that. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you have a motion? Sure. Second, Natalie. All those four, seven, oh, that's the motion. Yep. Uh, next up is high school. Like I said, pretty much uh, cell phones the main thing. We did, um, as I talked about when I gave you guys a board update, there is a little bit of a change to the uh, drug testing policy. Um, there, there is no longer going to be any academic um, penalties for a positive drug test because when it comes right down to it, you really shouldn't be doing that. It's extracurricular only that that deals with. Um, because there's a whole legal ramification about what does a positive drug test really mean versus being under the influence, and those are two totally separate things. So that's being changed 
at the high school too. So um, that the cell phone policy are really the main two major things at the at the high school level. But like I said, more information from the administrators will come out from there to, to kids and, and parents. Any comments, discussion? Okay, do I have a motion? Sharon? Second? Dennis? All those four? 700. Thank you. Next up is the 2526 calendar that I'd like to recommend. We've uh, worked on this for a few months. I appreciate everybody who took the time to look at it, give feedback. Uh, it's been to the teacher several times and we've talked about different things. So this calendar is very similar to what we've been doing for the past few years. Um, um, spring break lines up with uh, Bloomington and uh, MCCSC, which we kind of have to do for our uh, vocational kids. Um, we start school about the same time. This, is, this was also posted online for everybody to see. So um, we did add in a few uh, snow makeup days, one on Martin Luther King Day, one on Great Americans Day, one on Good Friday. So we have some built-in snow days there. Um, but nothing major, pretty, pretty similar to what we've been doing for the past few years. So I'd like to bring that to you for, for approval. Thank you for working ahead. Yeah, I know that really helps a lot it, of it, Well, and it, it helps us just in general, kinds of gets things out there and you take a break for it a little bit and you do the next one, you're still a decent ways ahead. So, yep. yep. Any discussion? All right, do I have a motion? Heather? Second? Natalie? All those four? Thank you. Seven, uh, uh, and we'll get that posted on the actual website, the, the you know, page it needs to be on here uh, this week. Okay, on to personnel. Uh, next one up. I'm gonna recommend that uh, you approve the retirement of a couple elementary teachers, uh, Kim James and Judy Milnes. Um, both served this corporation for many years, did a wonderful job for us, um, both of them came to me and Dustin to talk to us and uh, definitely emotional when they talk to us because it's not easy. It's not easy leaving something you've done for a long, long time. So I didn't I, mind. You didn't mind? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, not, not, yes. not talking yeah. about these two. He didn't mind about you. <laughs> You're talking about you. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm talking You're about retired. me. I, I didn't care a bit. I, no, no, make sure. Make sure clarifying. You're going to get him and Judy. Yeah. Yeah, you that's didn't want to retire. No, yeah. I didn't want to retire at all. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So no, can't you say enough forget. about those two. Um, uh, not yeah. not easy to replace they at were all. Fabulous teachers. Yep. Yeah. And they were they were two of them that we we laughed about when we were so scrunched when we we're K twelve here in the building that. Kim started out in the closet with us, <laughs> in the multi-purpose room closet yeah. that was her office. Because she started as a remedial teacher and then she went into the classroom. But and then of course Judy, the last of she and Karen White, the last of the old special ed team. Yeah. Well, we just got um, our taste of Miss Milness this year because Liam has her in. Like, I'm really sad about this mm -hmm. because, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you don't have a student that's already been through and that anxiety of not knowing how it's going to fit. And he absolutely loves her and is doing amazing. So I'm sure it's well deserved. Yeah, I will reiterate it's tough. I mean, all you have to do is look at their Facebook pages and it's two people truly love their profession mm -hmm. and it comes out. So they will be sorely mad. <coughs> um, all right. Do I have a motion? Dennis? The person that. <laughs> yeah, I get yeah. it. He's all <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Go ahead and retire. Don't cry about it. Yeah. Second by Mike. All those four. Seven of them. Thank you. How, how long have they been here? I didn't do the math um, or even ask M them. Many years. But it's been, yeah. yeah. Long time. 29 30. Yeah. Yeah, they're right up there. Yeah. 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 Wow. Good for them. Yep. Uh, next up, I'm ready to bring you the recommendation to hire 
our high school assistant principal. Um, this would be effective July 1, 2024. I'm recommending to you Ken Howard. Ken is currently the assistant principal at Barker Middle School up in Michigan City. However, he's uh, originally from Bloomington and has ties to uh, teaching and, and uh, doing some administrative intern work at Bloomington North. Um, comes very highly recommended, checked in, checked his references, uh, multiple references, all glowing, um, great things to say about him. Um, one of his references as, as his administrative mentor said that he is, number one, the best administrative mentor he's ever had in his uh, close to 30 years in education, but he's also said that if there's anybody out there that can make a difference with kids, it's Ken, that multiple kids have, have and th this is going back to when he was even a teacher, because when he was at uh, Bloomington North, he was a English teacher and head of the English department there, and kids would come and say, that, that's, that's the man there that made a difference in my life. So um, I think he's gonna do a, a good job for us. So that's my recommendation to you. He would have loved to be here tonight, but with uh, the eclipse day, they were actually in school today. I think they were releasing early, and he's like, I can't get away. I got to be there to do my administrative duties to help out. But I'm sure he'll be here at some point to, to meet all of you. All right. Any discussion? Eric, so we're right to hire Eric. Absolutely. Yeah. So the whole hiring uh, it was done through a committee. So there were high school teachers um, on the committee. Uh, Eric headed it up. They interviewed six uh, candidates. Then um, they chose their top two. Um, one of those ended up um, dropping out, and then we just interviewed Ken, we, and we felt like if uh, him being one of the top two, if he did a really good job, there's no need to, to go beyond that. And he came in here, and Eric and I talked with him, and he 100% impressed me. So yeah, Eric's very happy. Did we have any internal candidates? We had uh, one, in, one internal that was interviewed, another applied but didn't get an interview. So okay. yeah, we did have a couple. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any discussion on the board? Do I have a motion? Natalie? Second? Dennis? All those four? Thank you. Next up, we're going to get into a bunch of coaching. First, uh, I've got a recommendation to approve uh, Angie Inman as high school cheerleading coach. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Nothing about her, but yeah. why I've had a lot of people ask me in the community why the school doesn't help, like some of the cost on cheerleading, like other sports. Is it not, do we not classify it as a sport? Or is an IHSAA rule like, like I don't. From what I understand, our athletic department gives them nothing. Okay, hmm. is what I. So I, I didn't know. I told her I. When opportune time came up, I would ask. And yeah, I'll, just, I'll look into it. Um, now, as far as like, there's a lot of sports where parents are responsible for a lot of stuff. Right. I mean. Right. Where they have to buy the equipment that goes along with doing that sport. But yeah, I'll talk with Aaron okay. to find out Cause, exactly what. Because I'll be honest, those girls are probably at more things than the athletes are. So I, I they, just thought I'd bring it bring it up. And know. their uniforms and things are expensive. Are very expensive, so. And, yeah, I mean, and yeah, I don't know if we don't, I, yeah. I had thought about that. That's a yeah. great question. Yeah, I, I do just, know that they, unless it's changed, it has nothing to do about finance side, that they are not under the IHSA. Yeah, I would. it's not a sport I don't, the IHSA. I don't believe it's, so. It's not overseen to the Now, board. it's a varsity sport for us. For us, yes. right. But they right. do not fall under <clears throat> okay. the okay. umbrella of the okay. IHSA. Good. No, I, was just, I just told people in the community I would ask because, you know, if, if we could give any kind of assistance to help them yeah. somehow. You know, I'll look into it. I'll get you some some information okay. on that. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Well, I know our booster clubs help out a lot with lot. what our yeah. sports get, so yeah. they do get nice uniforms and nice warm ups and stuff yeah. because because we have such great booster clubs. Right. But the booster clubs are just those 
parents that are working right. their tails off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. You know, earning those funds. It's yeah. not like. Yeah, I've got a daughter that's. Yeah. I, she's yeah. done an amazing <laughs> job yeah. too. I know. Mm -hmm. Any other? Okay, do I have a motion to approve any? Dennis? Second? Kim? All those four? So no. Thank you. Next up is high school boys basketball, bringing you the recommendation to approve Jamie Hudson as boys basketball varsity head coach. Have a motion. Heather, second. Dennis, all those for. All those against. Okay, six one zero. Oh. Okay, thank you. High school dance is next, recommending Jamie Maxwell as high school dance coach. Do I have a motion? Kim? Second? Heather? All those four? Seven or High school boys and girls cross country uh, recommending Bill Valentine as high school boys and girls cross country coach. Do I have a motion? Natalie? Second? Dennis? All those four? Seven or High school soccer, uh, recommending Curtis Moffitt continue as high school soccer coach. Motion by Kim. Second, Natalie. All those four, seven out oh, oh. Girls golf, recommending Kim Ellett continue as high school girls golf coach. Do have a motion? Natalie, second, Sharon. All those four, seven out oh, oh. High school girls basketball, I'm recommending that Joe Pig continue as high school girls basketball varsity coach. Do I have a motion? Dennis, second, Natalie, all those four. Thank you. Assistants, we kind of grouped together for you, so I'll read these off. Um, recommending to approve the following high school assistant coaches. Amber Reeves as a cheerleading volunteer. Uh, Jacob Carmichael, uh, boys basketball assistant coach, but possibly JV. That'll be up to the coach how he wants to move people around. Uh, Logan Bailey, boys basketball assistant coach. Rod Root, boys basketball C team coach. Tyler Bruff as boys basketball volunteer assistant. Kyler Hudson, boys basketball volunteer assistant. Nikki Kindred, dance volunteer position. Ella Grease, dance, volunteer position. Keisha Blaze, cross country assistant. Riley Kieft, uh, JV volleyball coach. Kelly Provo, girls golf assistant, that's volunteer position. Jeremy Clark, girls basketball JV coach. Kylie Herndon, girls basketball assistant coach. Ashley Fish, girls basketball assistant coach. And Sarah Pig, girls basketball assistant, that's volunteer. Any discussion on any of these? I just think it's really cool how we have so many people that volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I look at that list, I look further down. I know football, we do the same. I mean, I guess that is football down here. But um, yeah, I just think I appreciate that too. There's so many people that give a lot of time for nothing. Absolutely. Well, except for the joy of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing monetary. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do I have a motion? Dennis? Second? Heather, all those four. Seven oh. Thank you once again. Middle school football, uh, making a recommendation recommendation of Chris Schultz as middle school head coach. Have a motion. Dennis. Second. Heather, all those four. Seven oh. Thank you. And now we've got middle school assistant coaches uh, recommending the following. Chad Dorman as track assistant, that's volunteer position. Um, Chad Dorman also as football assistant coach and Mikhail Bowles as football assistant coach. No a motion. Dennis, second, Heather, um, all those four, seven oh. Just to clarify to you, those are all middle school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Another item here, we have a recommendation for a middle school instructional assistant. I'm recommending the hiring of Rhonda Pfeiffer as a middle school IA, effective April 9th. Uh, this is the position they've been looking to fill here for a little while and found somebody that wants to come in and do that. It'd be a great help for us. Okay, do I have a motion? Sharon? Second? Heather? All those four? Seven oh. Thank you. I had a question. Yeah. yeah. We, we voted on the uh, middle school football coach. Mm hmm. Where, where's the varsity? Uh, he was already, they already did, no, they won't do, hold on. We already approved him. Okay. Yep. Thanks for asking, though. That was, uh, we approved him yeah, a few did. months ago. Yeah. Yep, so they could get started with uh, winter weights and that sort of stuff. So Summer program yep. and all that. Yep, yep. yep. Thanks, Mike. Uh, donations. As always, we have a very generous community, so let's go through these. Uh, $100 anonymous donation to the elementary middle school lunch account. Um, another, well, actually three of those. Three $100 anonymous donations to the elementary middle school lunch account. Um, very wonderful thing to do. $300, Melissa Wisely to Eastern Green High School Prom Fund. $250, Crane Credit Union to Eastern Green High School Cheerleaders. $190, anonymous donation to Eastern Green Elementary School 5th grade Bradford Wood Trip Fund. When does that happen? Does that happen? That is coming up here pretty quick. Okay. Yeah. Happened. Okay. No, it hadn't happened yet. Um, $40,000 anonymous donation to Eastern Green Middle School Weight Room Project. Um, that, that kind of plays into last month too. They, when they were only going to do 100000 they decided to give a check for 140 and they wanted 40 of it to go to the, to the middle school weight, weight room. So unbelievable uh, donation there. $10,000 from Bunge Agribusiness to Eastern Green Middle School, uh, ath Middle School Athletics, High School Athletics, and Agricultural uh, Program. You know what that's for? That was, just, that was just an interesting one to me. Well, they, they have some neat outreach stuff that they like to do in their business that goes out to community things, and they contacted Nathan Martindale and said, we'd like to make this donation, and we'd like it to go to these three areas and Nathan's like absolutely I can help figure that out yeah. so um, <laughs> that Nathan <laughs> Nathan Aaron um, myself and agriculture teacher are all going to work together and make sure that's spent very well and we'll have a we'll definitely let you guys know where that very all exciting. that money goes to so yeah so is there a bunkie down here I know it's a big there's one my in, old best friends is up in Decatur. There's one in Worthington. Okay, okay. That and is and, and there's, the and there's yeah. some it's folks that Bunky. have my fault. Bunky. children that go to school here, too. Okay. Yeah. That's That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, That's very yep. much appreciated. So, and then the last one there, $1,000 Sam Reese Trucking to Eastern Green High School Boys Golf. So, like I said, once again, very, uh, very giving community. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to approve this? Yeah. Second, Natalie. All those four. Seven oh eight. Thank you. Do have some late items. Some of these did come in after we had it finalized, and a couple of them were uh, on me that somehow didn't see that we didn't have them on it when when Treva first gave it to me. So that's the, a couple of them were on me. Um, we do have a. a Resignation from Tina Smith, high school uh, nurse and nur corporation nursing assistant, um, effective immediately. Tina did an absolute fantastic job for us. Um, loved kids, just got along so great with the staff, but unfortunately she's just not going to be able to continue for some, some different reasons, and um, we wish her all the best. I had some wonderful uh, emails back and forth with her. Uh, about how great of a job she did for us, but she just needs to resign at this time. So, making yep. that recommendation. Yep, we definitely wish her the best. You really did a lot over there. Yeah. I saw it firsthand. Okay, do I have a motion? Mike? Second? Natalie? All those four? Seven out Thank you. 
we will start working immediately on getting that position uh, filled. And if somebody can even start before the end of the school year, we'll, we'll let them, we'll see. But uh, we'll definitely try to have it uh, going for next year. Next up, uh, recommending to approve the resignation of Rebecca Mobley as middle school resource teacher, uh, effective end of the school year, so May 20th, 2024. Uh, Rebecca's been with us for a few years teaching and she's done a, a good job for us and we wish her all the best in, in her future endeavors. I have a motion, Dennis, second, Heather, all those four, so no, uh, Thank you. Uh, recommending the approval of resignation of Emily Black as high school social studies teacher, effective May 20th, 2024. Um, Emily will definitely be missed. Has done a wonderful job at the high school teaching some uh, upper level uh, social studies classes for us. So she's gonna be a hard one, hard one to replace. Has so. she been here long? Uh, she's been here as long as I have. Same. Feels like at several least. years but yeah yeah so yeah. Well, I re it was a long time because <laughs> both my daughters had her and thought she was an amazing teacher my daughter I, too she's another one that's going to be really tough pretty tragic. to lose so we definitely wish her the best yes big shoes to fill okay do i have a motion heather second mike all those four Thank you. Next up are a couple contracts that uh, I gave you uh, as the board, I gave you those a while, a little while back to look at. Um, two, what I feel are pretty neat things for us to, to take part in. First, uh, Caitlin Eight, our corporation nurse, found this called School Care. <laughs> um, it's a system that she can use to help chart nurse visits. Um, it communicates very well with parents. If they have an email address in our SIS system, Harmony, um, they will get automatic updates if their child has been to the nurse, tells why they were there, basically to see her notes. Um, so it's actually gonna cut down a lot on phone calls that, that um, she won't have to make now. Obviously, she's still gonna make phone calls on things she thinks she needs to, but some more routine things she won't have to. Uh, this is a completely free system. Um, it will also help connect parents to healthcare if needed. Um, there's no pressure to, to do any of that. They won't you know, contact you if you don't need it type thing. But if, uh, if for some reason they see that your child has been to, through the notes and things, have been to the nurse for the same type of thing um, in a certain period of time, um, they can try to reach out and say, do you need any help finding health care for this type of situation? So um, I think it's a, a win-win for us to, to join in on this. So that is what I'd like to re recommend to you that you allow me to do this contract. Any discussion on this? I like free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I think it sounds pretty useful too. Yep. I'm okay. assuming it's HIPAA okay. compliant and all that mm -hmm. too. But yep. yeah. So it's something that they don't, they wouldn't have to have like a separate app for they would it would send it to the correct email that goes she would... to the email okay yep yeah sounds great okay i got your motion second by dennis all those four okay thank you this next one unfortunately is not free but it's not that expensive either <laughs> um recommending to approve a contract with final site we already use Final Sight as our web provider. Um, they bought out SchoolPoint a couple years ago when we had actually switched to SchoolPoint, but Final Sight's doing a good job for us. Um, the reason I'm asking to do this contract is when Final Sight bought out SchoolPoint, um, they brought along with it the messaging system that we use now when you, know, you get to hear my wonderful voice on school closings and all that sort of thing. It's called Send It. Well, Final, that's not Final Sight's product that was school points and they made it very clear to us that they weren't really going to be doing any updates to that it is what it is they have they were working on their own and eventually we were going to have to go over to their messaging system well that time's getting near by I think July of 26 we were going to have to go to their messaging system and I'm kind of like why are we going to wait that long um, I met with a final site rep he took me through their their messaging system i think it is very neat it's got a lot of 
things that, that Send It can't do and I feel does better. Um, so that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is then they showed me a family app um, that can be downloaded on a parent's phone that can get you all, basically all the information that, that we need to get to you through one channel, which is that, that app. Um, no longer do you have to go searching through umpteen different Facebook pages or Twitter. That is amazing. Twitter like, that is truly amazing. <laughs> 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 yes. 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 This, this can also be used. <laughs> we'll show you after the meeting, Mike. Right. Well, I have to, I'll tell you that. It can also be used by teachers to communicate directly with parents so that we can cut down on, you know, there's all the neat different ones out there, Class Dojo, Remind, all that. We can just use this one. Um, so it's a very neat system. It, it also has templates for our admins and teachers to be able to do newsletters and things like that. So. Um, it's basically not going to be that much more expensive for us to take on this app um, with the Messenger XR that, that they're offering. So I think it's about 2500 a little more, uh, a year more just to do the app. So And they're not charging us any setup fees like they normally like to do. They're waiving all those because we're already a customer. So, and yeah. there's no charge to the parents to download the app? None. Okay. Nope. I think Natalie and I have to make a motion. <laughs> yeah. Right. If any other people are listening out there that have been complaining about this for a long time. Oh, I know. We're delivering it to you. It just yeah. took a while. Any discussion? <laughs> They're ready to. We're ready. Yeah. Okay, a motion. Motion. Natalie. Organize us, Thank please. Natalie. I agree. I'm, I'm all for this. All those four. Seven oh oh. I'm ha so happy to see this. <laughs> Thank you for that. I know we've discussed it a, yes. like a while yeah. back, but this well, is and you, an awesome solution. Yeah, sometimes you got to wait for those people you're already dealing with to, to come up with that, because this is going to be a, a new app for them. Mm -hmm. I met with another company who has had an app for a while, and um, as far as the money goes, we're getting a much better deal. <laughs> the other company was much more expensive on top of the setup fees I talked about. They were going to charge us the setup fees plus the yearly stuff we have to pay. So everything I've seen they, that they've shown me um, looks really good, so. Wonderful. Now does this do like messaging too? Yeah. So like students could have this, so if teachers want to message outside of email? Yeah, I believe they can, yeah. Okay, because it seems like most kids don't understand the email these days. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it has that, that ability. They treat it like the Pony Express or something, mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that's it as far as the agenda. Yep. Okay. Anything else you want to go over? Not much, other than we are we are quickly winding things down. We're sitting here in the second week of April already, so things are going to be coming quickly. Obviously, the spring sports have already started. Um, got some uh, kids doing some really good things on the athletic fields already this this spring. Um, prom will be here before you know it at the high school. <coughs> field trips. <laughs> we got some last last field trips here in the spring for elementary and things like that. So I know I just had to buy a dress. So mm -hmm. when is prom? Uh, Three weeks from yeah. Friday. Okay. And then we have the musical coming up too. Yeah, right? yeah. musical. Thank That's you. Exciting. Yeah. So all kinds of stuff going on. I don't know that I have a whole. Lot to share with you. By the way, the dress is my daughter, not me. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I thought you were sure. I, I assume. You were buying it for okay, I, just I assume. Be here. <laughs> I can't wait to see the pictures. <laughs> so no, I really don't have anything else for you. Okay, um, Sharon, do you have anything you'd like to say? Um, I'm gonna miss Kim and Judy. It's gonna be that's a real hole in the elementary. Kim. Yeah, I, I have a couple things, actually, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, one is on April 11th, uh, high school's having a career fair yes. at the building, and I'm so excited about all the different people that are going to be there and mm -hmm. the work and variety of employers and folks that uh, provide opportunities for our kids after high school, so uh, so real excited about that. I will say that, I mean, the public's not welcome, but board members, mm -hmm. if you get a chance, come see what that. What time is it? It's during, uh, sure. yeah, it's during the school, school day. day. But it's pretty impressive. 
I we'll, will absolutely reiterate we'll get you the, what we'll get you the times. Okay. Because yeah. even if I could come over for just a little bit, if I'm, I'm working from home, that would I'll be great. I went last year and I was quite impressed mm -hmm. at the sheer amount it's of... Great. At the high school? Yeah. Yep. In the gym, yeah. main gym. There. Yeah, gym. it's... Mm -hmm. I was shocked how many people. And the, last year was the gym floor and the yes, upper, upper gym. Oh, wow. yeah. balcony. It was all full of... And it was all levels. It was summer jobs. Coordinator. Uh, JAG helps a lot, uh, and uh, the administration there help. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a real huge yeah. team effort to get yeah. people yeah. there. I think Mrs. Bellman. Yeah, so Jamie Bellman with the JAG so program yeah. really heads it up. Contact, yeah. Jamie does a great job. Mm -hmm. She does all sorts of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. great things. There. Extra yeah. things, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Sorry, I didn't mean to No, take that's all right. It's, some, it's great stuff. Um, I know we talked uh, some previously even about the reading scores and things like that. And I guess one of the things in the information you sent to us about data, you know, mm -hmm. and, and letting the data speak to us, I guess, is, um, you know, there were some really obvious uh, high performers in the group and some low performance. Now, obviously that's maybe because of the class and the students that are in the class and things like that. But sometimes I wonder if we could take a look at, as an organization, those high performer classrooms, because they might be just doing something a little different or just kind of have that different um, approach or maybe have different tools that they've, you know, have in their back pocket that they're always using that they can share with their teaching friends and buddies in the classrooms, right? And sure. um, not to uh, diminish what the other, others have done, but looking at if there's such that high of a performance, then there's something going on there. Yeah. So let's and there, and think there about past practice in, right. in doing. We were just yes. talking about this the other day mm -hmm. that of having professional development that's not big, you know, professional right. development. But after school on Tuesday, let's get together and, and talk right. about. I, yeah. if somebody's doing something great. Let's share this idea. Right. Um, right. So. Right. So when I saw that data, I'm familiar from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, when you look at data and you go, oh, someone's way out there, <coughs> what's going on over there, yep. where there's positive or negative, it, it's a good learning opportunity. So yep. I saw that in the results, so I just I just put that out there for Absolutely. us to think about and uh, think about strategies. Um, and then along that same line, I'm interested in knowing if the board would be interested, maybe we can talk about it later, but uh, having some... Um, a working session on some strategic planning now that we have our administrative teams totally fully loaded now <laughs> with our full-time uh, new candidates in there and think about strategies of when we could do that when we can uh, sure. work together on some things like that yep. um, I know from my work I could bring some information to the board I think about regional things that are going on or even our folks from our office could do that yeah. um, would help just kind of maybe level set our knowledge base a little bit about what's 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 been going on and what's coming yeah. that sometimes people just don't know because of our news media that we really don't have right besides yeah. Facebook <laughs> and things like that so yep I'm putting finishing touches on goals that will oh, hopefully yeah. help with that too yeah, perfect so you'll, timing. you'll see those very soon I got to get them out to teachers too yeah. for them to see but yeah. it's kind of what the administration team has come up with and mm -hmm. then Hopefully, you guys can help formulate some goals to help us achieve those. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's one of the things our role, I think, is is to help support that and to yep. help guide and direct some bigger pillar things, right? Yep. And let you, as the ex experts in the field, you know, yep. um, help make those things happen. You know, Absolutely. Right? Um, <coughs> along that line, we have. Uh, I'm just wanting to throw this out that there's really something cool going on in the region. There's several schools in our 11 counties that have student-run businesses at their schools. And the student-run businesses can be anywhere from a little coffee shop all the way up to a business that has machining and does little parts that they sell to a subcontractor from Crane that actually go on the battleship. So it's really some amazing things going on in the region. Um, and we're having a conference, unfortunately, on the same day as a career fair. So uh, Brown County is hosting, allowing all the student-run businesses to come in share with each other what's going on and I know Eric has uh, approved one of our high school students teachers honestly to come and participate and see and learn about that for potential ideas about how to do that maybe here in the future so um, it's a great tool for rural schools 
that don't have as many job opportunities to go actually do work-based learning at. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to learn about doing work-based activities within your own school system. So just wanted to, again, level our knowledge a little bit about what's sure. going on in the region. I know my cousin is over that at WRB. Oh, yeah. And they're printing t-shirts for our family reunion. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, some of them do work for the school, some of them do work for the community people, some, it's just all kinds of things they do. And they set up a business in their school that has all the different positions and roles, so it's really cool. Um, and then my last item is, and this, I, I just throw this out just because I'm curious, and maybe it's something we don't, um, are worried about here, but we just went through an NCAA Women's Championship activity, right? And I saw some chatter around about how the time of the game versus the time of the men's game versus different things. And then there's some conversation in there about our high schools, not Eastern Green, but just in general. The concept of women's sports and men's sports, girls' sports or boys' sports. And I just am curious about, from a Title IX perspective, how many school day ball games, say for like our girls' basketball team, that the girls basketball team has to uh, go play a game on a school night versus how many do a boys basketball team have to go play on a school night. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking for that equity piece of our girls and boys and maybe it's something that we could look at all of our sports a little bit on, on those things and how we think of it as a system. Not necessarily that it's good or bad or that it, if it's it, it, well, if, if it's we appropriate. utilize the same space and we have to do away games and home games, like I could see where that could be coordinated to where everybody could play basketball. I mean, uh, except for the fan base would be, you know, split families, like we're split between everything else when you have more than one child in a thing. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we're not using our gym every Friday night. Right. Well, and I think it's interesting that you brought this up because um, Drew and I were having a discussion during basketball season about this. Um, because I do think they do a great job at like, the boys have the after school practice one day and the girls have it the next day and they, they do a good, like, a good job of dividing up the mm -hmm. times. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, when I was in school, it was never like that. The girls right, got the right. crap times so we just, right. we did. Right. Um, and I think as far as the schedule goes, it's a lot different mm -hmm. now too. So I, I have not looked at it from a scientific standpoint mm -hmm. to study it, but um, it's, it's interesting to see. Yeah. Maybe Aaron would have more insight yeah. into that because like, he goes to like an AD conference and stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure that mm -hmm. you're not the first person that's brought I'll talk with him about it. I, yeah. I do know it definitely has gotten more equitable because of exactly what you talked right. about with mm -hmm. Title IX. I know that, right. you know, when I played high school basketball, is we we pretty much played on the weekends every once in a while during the week. And mm -hmm. yeah, the girls played throughout the week. And mm -hmm. the HSAA really made a point to change that. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's pretty equitable, but we we can always look into it and make sure. Okay. So yeah, we'll 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 look at it. And Don't forget, you got to have the other team agree to all that. Too. Mm -hmm. Excuse oh, me. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's more than just. It would have to be more than just our yeah. school. It would have to be. Yeah. You know all. You, you had well, to, you well, you had to set up. Culture change. Well, and I understand that, that doesn't happen overnight. Right. But to make yeah. a change, if it's not talked about and it's not brought forward and yeah. it's not considered, Absolutely. then it will never happen. Right. So I'm important. Yeah, I'm pretty adamant about it because yeah. I did look at the schedule and it's not equal. So, um, the last schedule. So, we need to think about that as a school. And and bring our partner schools along that we play against, right? And it's just a whole culture change. That and has I to think happen. our cheerleaders, they're going to all the girls, like they're going they to the girls games and the boys the games. And I think they kind of split, don't they, to them? Do they go to all of them? I think they go to the, all the girls home games, I think. I think they do. They are they're split a lot of ways, but I think I mean yeah, the cheerleaders they they have enough of them, but I think they could probably work out I something think the too. The band yeah. plays a ball. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. they kind of split the mm -hmm. yeah. right. So and see, y'all yeah. are doing that. You're looking at the whole system, oh, yeah. right? So I'm not great. picking on yeah. one. I just know that it's brought to light the conversation. I think it's great sure. because of the NCAA women's yeah. game that just happened and some conversation that was happening about it. So. Um, yeah, I I think it's all really positive. It's a great a great time to 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 think and look. So appreciate it if you, if we could do something. Yeah, we'll that look way. into it. Thanks yeah. for bringing that up. So excited about the future at Eastern Green. I think we saw some great things still going. Awesome.
Heather? Okay. Natalie? Yeah, we had the fourth and fifth grade um, musical, mini musical, and it was fabulous. Those kids, it was amazing that such big voices and performance abilities came out of those little people. <laughs> I mean, I was just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, congrats to Mrs. Drummond. Like she does an amazing <coughs> job with that, and I know my um, my son had a, a little part where he had to stay after school multiple days, and so I know she's put a lot of time into that, and a lot of other people have that behind the scenes that I don't know. And our Mister, our Mister Scott down there, he did his part with the live stream. Yeah, it's online if you want to watch it. It's online if you want to watch it. <laughs> um, he's everywhere, but. No, that's just really great, and I love seeing that. And like the gym was standing room only, like oh, it was cool. amazing. So, yeah, yeah. So, good job, <laughs> Dennis. Uh, just thank you again to all the donors. That's uh, that's huge. Really, really helps our school out. Yeah, yeah it does. We can't thank them enough for that. Mike, Eric's not here because he's home gloating over Purdue. <laughs> okay. You know that's yeah. that's as rare as the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ouch. I, I was actually going to bring a Yukon <laughs> sign and stick it up here. I am. I am. Root, I am rooting for Purdue. So. Yeah, so. They're going to have their hands full. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Yukon, so. <laughs> well, I have Purdue's a Big Ten yeah. school. Okay. Yeah, you got to go loyal. Yeah. Um, I will just say. Um, a week from Friday night, school musical starts. There'll be one performance Friday night, one performance Saturday night, one performance Sunday afternoon. It's Beauty and the Beast. Um, and my, um, I've seen a little bit of their rehearsals and I think it's gonna be a pretty spectacular show. So I invite everybody out to uh, come and see a pretty cool, cool musical. Scott, I thought of one other thing and I just saw this on Facebook, so I have to assume it's correct. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. uh, April 16th, from 6 to 8, there's a K-12 art show at the oh, high school right. oh, that's cafeteria, and that's the only place I saw it. Oh, wow, I saw it, yeah. that. It's the first time we've had a K-12. I mean, the high school has done it, but, but, yeah. but I think this is really, really cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. So I will adjourn, make a... I recommend the meeting be adjourned at 729. 732. Uh, uh, that's off. That's off. <laughs> a, little, a little fast. Um, do I have a motion? Mike? Second? Kim? All those four? 700. Yes. That's it. I got it.